Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to As Above, So Below, a rune and tarot divination for Thursday, the 7th day of March, 2024. Well, I hope you're all having a good week. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, I hope you'll click subscribe and join us every Monday and uh, Thursday for uh, a rune and tarot reading to just you know, give you an idea of other things to think about, basically. I'm really not about predictions or anything like that. Um, I, I basically draw two runes, one from the Elder Futhark bag, that's the higher self side, the above side, and the below side is the Geomancy rune that I draw. And those are the significators for the reading. They, uh, and, and, with, and all that, I mean, that's just a fancy way of saying this is the, the overall focus of the reading. And then from there, I'll draw three cards minimum. If I feel like I need more, I'll take more. No, I generally don't do any more than five cards, but usually it's just three. And that'll give the details about the overall influence here for today. And that's really all I'm concerned about. I'm just concerned about what influences are active today with the reading so that they can alert us to. So anyhow, let's get started and talk about the above side the, from the Elder Futhark. We have Alyes. Now Alyes is the 15th rune of the Elder Futhark, so as a six numerology, if you're just looking at the order. Otherwise, if you want to look at uh, uh, Alyes itself, you can use a numerology table and, and discover that, at that one, uh, that type of numerology for it. But for the purposes of this reading, we just use the uh, general, ex generally accepted order of the Elder Futhark. And all use you can it, it's it basically represents the elk or the elk sedge, and the elk sedge is the the marshy area where elk uh, tend to 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 forage and and hide <laughs> and it's sort of the uh, the the sedge will the sedge grasses grasses they'll hide the antlers from people from hunters who want to or other predators who want to, who want to uh, uh, you know take them out or whatever right <laughs> to challenge their existence in some way but uh, uh, the other way of looking at this is raising your arms in supplication to the goddess and uh, I tend to look at it that way uh, or to whatever you want to want to put at the end of that raising your arms in supplication to spirit maybe um, and uh, it's really about the uh, link between physical and astral realms it's a very spiritual room it represents higher consciousness and divinity along with protection uh, and, and realistically, you know, if you're thinking about it in terms of protection, it's the protection that higher self gives you to be able to look at a situation without reacting from the standpoint of the ego or the below side of things. And we talk about that a lot here. That seems to be, at least in my opinion, the, the real polarity that we need to be concerned with, not so much the masculine and feminine within, although that's good information to have, you know, where you lie on that continuum of experience but realistically we're souls that that are here for whatever time we're here for uh and for whatever you know and however many times we're here uh on this planet and uh it, it's that in it's that relationship between soul and ego that really needs to be addressed <clears throat> because if you're very ego based then you tend to be pretty reactive maybe you don't uh uh, really look beneath the surface or, or hear the underlying messages of something or try to get to the bottom of something before forming an opinion. And t instead, when ego is really active, we, 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 we bow up, you know, we, ri we rise to the occasion, <laughs> maybe when we should kind of sit back and observe. And, and if we did that, that would be more of higher self informing how we need to, to be doing things at that moment. Higher self will say, well, no, you need to, to just wait and, and see before you react. Well, humans aren't necessarily like that. And so that's, to me, that's our greatest challenge is, is that is figuring out the relationship our soul has with our ego and having everything be more heavily weighted on the soul aspect of self instead of the ego aspect of self. That seems to be in any event what well that that that's just the way i i see this and the way i see these readings uh, on the on the below side of things we have via from the geomancy runes uh, geomancy is anything that has to do with earth energies uh, so it could be ley lines it could be the geomancy runes um anything like that uh, uh pendulum work could be a, an example of of uh of a type of geomancy if you will um, but, but Vaya is about a new path or a new direction and coupled with all yees, it seems to be that the new direction is to kind of let ego take a back seat to higher awareness. And so let's see though, what the, 
what the uh, uh, cards have to say. I've already done some shuffling here um, prior to starting, uh, and I didn't get any further than that. So I'll go ahead and do a little bit more here. And then we'll cut the deck, and we'll take the lower half. And, and then I'll take three cards, and we'll see what they have to say. Either the challenges we're going to have, maybe, at... Uh, you know, allowing higher self and divinity to take the wheel, basically. Uh, <laughs> or or maybe it'll be something that aligns with it. Well, we have... Uh, we have all minor arcana cards here today. We don't have any majors. Um, we have... Uh, uh, one, or two from cups, so we have a run on cups, so emotions is going to be part of the, the uh, uh, and, and maybe that means empathic awareness, I don't know, we'll, we'll just take a look at this, and then we have one from the suit of wands, which is also a court card, we have the queen of wands there, so before we get started here, where's my little, my little app here, um, so I said that uh, Alyse was the 15th rune, which is a six numerology, one and five is six, so we get six plus two, the two of uh, cups, plus ten, which reduces to one on the ten of cups. So that's a nine uh, numerology for the overall, the overall numerology for the reading is nine. Nine reflects endings and completion. It also reflects spirituality and generosity. So it, it really dovetails well with the idea of a new path that allows higher awareness to sort of be a little more uh, present in our lives than just being reactive. Uh, and I think that, that uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and let's just read this as it is. And, and if we need to move the cards around, we will, which you can. If it's an undefined reading uh, in particular, you can move the cards around to make sense. But let's go ahead and just... So we don't we haven't attached a pattern like past, present, future, or anything like that to the three cards. So let's just go ahead and read them as influences. Uh, we have the two of cups here. We see a man and a woman, uh, with the uh, whole, each holding a, a a cup in their outstretched hand. You see the caduceus between them and the the winged lion. That all that all is essentially and um, with the lion you're talking the fire element. All right, and with any card in the in the minor arcana, you're going to see more than one element present. Okay, even though this is cups and it's a suit of cups, and we're talking emotions and and empathy and compassion and love and understanding and uh, uh, also change. Uh, that's another one. Momentum, um, balance. Uh, you still can. We'll see other 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 elements, and here you see the fire element, and this is about healing. And this is intentional healing. These two people have come together. In fact, you can see, in fact, you may see, <clears throat> you see a home in the distance. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't have any tea in here, so I don't, I'm kind of losing my voice here already. Uh, but you see their home in the distance, but they've gotten away from it. Anytime you see this dual line here, I call it a dual line of de demarcation or separation. They're separating themselves from their home, essentially, getting away from whatever drama took place there. <clears throat> and they're stepping away outside of all of that influence, and they're coming together in purity and in grace, basically. And so they're trying to heal the, the rift between them, the imbalance between them. Uh, and you see the man is the one that's actually, and he's wearing a, a, a red... Uh, well, kind of a headband, or actually it's it's more of a wreath of flowers. Um, let's see if I, I don't have my... Yeah, it looks like, like maybe either, either, well, maybe little roses or something. And then it looks like the woman, though, is uh, wearing like a green wreath on her head. Uh, but basically, he's taking the step toward her. He's also reaching for her. You can see his hand right here in the center. He's the one who's initiating the healing. So evidently he's done something, <laughs> you know, and well, people do, you know, does it could be either, either one of them really, but, but he's done something here, at least in this, in, at least in this representation. And, uh, he's going to apologize and he's going to try and write the ship basically and write the relationship between them. 
And so two, you know, is about love and balance and, and uh, cooperation and collaboration. And, and uh, uh, so it, it, it really, between the numerology of the card and, and the depiction, it really resonates that there needs to be some healing of a relationship maybe today. Maybe somebody said something. You know, they spoke without thinking and out it all came and, and you know, and, it, and, and, it, and they probably even realized it as it was happening that I can't bring this back now because my mouth is still continuing to move, right? It could be something as simple as that and, uh, you know, and, and let's face it, there's things that, you know, maybe we're in a mood or whatever and things come out before we really think about them and, and, uh, uh, and instead of being able to understand the effect of our actions, you know, with the divinity within, you know, with all yeast and, you know, we don't and there it is and you have to deal with it. And I think that that's probably what's happening here. And when, and, and, and when that happens, you know, and I feel like these two are the end of the reading. So I think we needed to start with the queen. So before I read this card, let's just start over again. And let's start with the queen. So the queens are interesting in, in tarot. Uh, the queen of swords is a real interesting one because, because she doesn't take any prisoners. I mean, seriously, she does not take any prisoners at all. She expects you to be honest with her. Um, and uh, the queen of wands, similar... Uh, but the Queen of Wands is, uh, she's an older woman in authority. All queens are. She's strict. She's also generous. She's uh, very talented. She's very willful. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe she, she may expect the same thing the Queen of Swords does, but at the same time, she may be more willing to act on it if you don't. And so you see her her little familiar here, her, her black cat looking at us. You see the lions on her uh, throne. Uh, she holds sunflower in her hand, which is also about vitality. Uh, she holds a wand, or well, in this case, a staff, but it's a suit of wands, but, but it's usually uh, depicted by staffs. Uh, and you can still see greenery growing from it, so there's still energy there. Uh, you see up here the back, the drape behind her uh, throne. You're going to see uh, the the lions there, and you're also going to see two sunflowers. So that's her. It's almost like that's her family crest. It involves lions and sunflowers. All right, and uh, and you see she's also very spiritual. You see the three pyramids over there. That always uh, it, it indicates a spiritual journey of some kind, uh, and so. I think that she just expects things. She just, she doesn't want to deal with anything that that isn't you know necessary. She's not actually even looking you in the eye. She's looking toward the future. So she's got to express her will in some way here today. So maybe that's the impetus for somebody saying, "Hey, whether it's it's uh, you know," and she could be representing this guy here. Again, we can get caught up in the in the gender of everything on these cards, or we can see them a little more neutrally. So whether this is a man and a woman or not, or it's just two friends, uh, uh, initially we have the, the fire relating here. We have the fire element from the, the suit of wands uh, uh, sort of imposing itself here on this card and also here on the guy. And so this could be the inner will that says to right the ship and say, okay, and have some integrity, have some dignity about you and go and apologize you know try to make things right when when something went amiss and if you're the one who did it then then own that and and take and take responsibility for it and bring things back into balance today uh, but this I think is the motivation this is the inner motivation to take your inner authority and to accept responsibility for what happened and to use that will then to initiate that 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 uh, type of a uh, uh, of an interaction with your partner, say, or or with a friend or or coworker or whoever it is, right, a family member, uh, and then in the end, see what you have is. Uh, uh, you have happiness and the reward of, of unity and love and family. So, so again, if this was mom and dad and dad did something, you know, dad's going to have to take the bull by the horns and own the situation and, uh, and, and go to her, go to, go, go to mom and say, listen, um, I, I messed up. And, uh, and, and I mean, again, this is just an example. It doesn't have to be this 
you know, it doesn't have to actually be dad and mom. But here you have the, the family back together again. And this could, again, it may not be the immediate family. It may be your circle of friends. Maybe something happened between you and, and another person and it's impacting the group, you know, uh, or, it's fam or, or it's your extended family or your work family or whatever. You, again, this doesn't have to be specifically about this. But you see 10 cups there embedded in the rainbow above and the, the, the mom and dad in this, in this picture uh, looking over at the home. Maybe they've, they've uh, found a new home. Maybe they've purchased a new home. And uh, you see the kids dancing over here. Everybody's happy. And again, you see this line here. It's not really a dual line. It's more of a solid black line. But you see the difference between they're over here and they're ready to move under the rainbow, so to speak, and, and, and go to their, their fortune, essentially, their, their, their wealth, their legacy in that home that they share together together now. Uh, you see, you see uh, uh, a stream over here on the side. Um, everything is, you see, it's all greenery there. It's all abundant. And so you can look at the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is the relationships you have with others, really. And, and, and what you can grow from that, the legacy you leave behind from that. Uh, you see in the Ten of Pentacles, uh, an issue of legacy there, at least in my opinion. Uh, and, and it's and with 10 you come to the it's sort of an endings and completion thing if you were to terminate the ends in other words draw a line on either side you'd have the rune de gauze <coughs> excuse me and de gauze is about the end of one phase and the beginning of another and when you write the the 10 in a roman numeral you can you can kind of see beyond the the numeral the roman numeral itself and and feel the the energy of of one thing giving away to another the same thing here with the two you know where whatever issue that was there is giving away giving away to uh or giving way to uh, uh healing and and uh, and 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 unity and love right and so I think that, that when you're looking at then the queen, the queen is just basically saying you have to be the one. You have to be the one to take the first step. Um, uh, and maybe even if you're not the one who transgressed, it might be up to you to take that. Uh, and, but in this card, it's, it's showing it another way. It's just using the will, to, to, the will within to take responsibility uh, for whatever the situation is and to make the first move. Um, and to return things to a sense of balance uh, that you had before. And when that happens, then you can then rejoin together in love and unity uh, and appreciate what you have together. Um, and then start anew because the other side of, of the 10, one and zero is one and one is new beginnings, which aligns with Thaya. So, so I think that Taking responsibility is the first step here, uh, and drawing higher, drawing in higher awareness to to give you that ultimate will from from the soul level to do that to to see the value in the relationship and to realize that that uh, it's just time to drop resistance and and come together again and heal. Uh, and then from there, you know, there's your greater fortune and you can begin a new path together, maybe a new direction with Vaya and with the Ten of Cups. So it's a really simple reading. Um, the last two readings, last Thursday and Monday, I think dovetailed. And, and that was, I mean, if you want to look at both of those write-ups, uh, you can look at them over at the blog at Stepping Aside. The web address there is imsteppingaside.com. If you forget, click on more below the video and it'll open up this window that has a bunch of stuff in it. But at the top is the website address. Um, I write these up on the blog. I also post them over on Patreon, Medium, and Substack. Uh, I don't post the video on Substack or Medium. I just have a link to it. On Patreon, though, if you're a Patreon subscriber, then the video is right there. You can just click on it and watch, watch this there. Otherwise, you know, you can come to the YouTube channel and do it. I mean, it takes you there anyway. Anyway, I mean, really. So either either way you do it, but uh, but there on the blog, um, I I just put the link up because I have it on the side panel as well. So the current the current video, uh, the current reading, I should say. Um, but but basically, uh, if you want to go back and look at those two days, last Thursday and Monday, we had Tristitia both days. 
um, which is a really interesting rune. It's it's um, uh, it's considered an evil influence because it's so ego minded. It's really getting stuck and and emotionally and 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 it's just kind of interesting because. Uh, we had uh, the same type of bookends. We had the Six of Pentals, Pentacles and the Six of Swords surrounding the Knight of Cups. And then we uh, that was last Thursday. And then on Monday, we had the Four of Pentacles, the Six of Wands and the Four of Swords. We, so we had the same kind of bookends with the same suits there on the ends. Uh, and between that and Tristitia, and then we had I Was and So Willow as the as, the as Above Room from the Elder Futhark. Uh, for those two days, I think that the energies were very similar. And so if you want to go back and look at those particularly Mondays, um, I, I, I think I talked about it in that particular write up uh, about how that happened and how I think the two are related. Um, this is kind of dealing with the same sort of thing. So this is nice to see a shift to something else that, okay, I mean, just a simple misunderstanding maybe that just needs to be remedied so that you can come back together in love and unity and maybe proceed in a new direction with one another that's successful and and uh, leaves a legacy and, and, and brings happiness and, if, and, and emotional fulfillment that the Ten of Cups brings. Because once you've healed, then comes the emotional fulfillment and the life together, right? Uh, and the and the direction you're going together. So, um, so if you want to look at those two, uh, or at least Monday's reading, um, and and do the right look at the write up, uh, and maybe even watch the video because I talked about it there too. Um, you can see how these readings sometimes will dovetail together, which sort of indicates to me that this is a longer term issue that people might be or might be dealing with. Uh, and uh, just to see how those kinds of things dovetail together. It's kind of an interesting thing to do, I think. Um, but in any event, I think we've moved maybe a little bit beyond that, hopefully. And uh, now we're just to an issue where you see the value in coming together and taking the initiative to do that so that you can come together and, and maybe embrace a new path together. So anyhow. That's it for today, I think. And uh, think about this for the weekend. See if this applies. If it doesn't today, maybe it will in a few days or a week from now or something. Uh, again, if you haven't yet clicked subscribed, I'd love you to do that and, and come back and, and join us again on Monday for another edition of As Above, So Below. Be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And blessed be.